In this video, I'm going to show you how to save as many squad mates, crew members, and major NPCs as possible and get the best ending in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This guide will cover the decisions you need to make in all three games to get that warm, fuzzy feeling at the end of your Mass Effect journey, at least to the extent that is possible given the endings of Mass Effect 3. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. Before we begin, you should know I have over 150 Mass Effect Trilogy videos on my channel, including hidden scenes, rare choices, lower videos, and guides. So if you want to see more Mass Effect, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Without further ado, let's dive right in. A lot of you have been asking me for this guide lately. I've made lots of videos on how to save individual characters or guides on how to get the best ending in specific games like Mass Effect 2 and 3, but I didn't have a comprehensive video that covers the whole trilogy. Well that changes today. This guide will obviously have spoilers. I'm assuming most of you have already played these games, but if you are new, then maybe don't watch the sections on the games you haven't finished yet. You've been forewarned. This is going to be a rapid fire kind of video, so if there's something that's still unclear to you by the end, I've put a list of links in the description to all of my more in-depth guides on how to save these characters. So let's start with Mass Effect 1. Vermeer is actually the only mission in the game where your squad mates can die. Rex is the first of these, and he's fairly easy to save if you know this confrontation is coming beforehand. There are a few ways to save Rex. The easiest is to complete the mission to retrieve his family armor. Talk to him after each main story mission, go through each dialogue, and eventually he'll give you a mission to retrieve his family armor. If you complete this mission before Vermeer, he will automatically back down during the standoff. Otherwise, you can talk him down with either a Paragon or Renegade speech check if you have 8 points in either Charm or Intimidate. There are some more obscure ways to save him on Vermeer as well, for instance, if you don't recruit Garrus before Vermeer, then Rex will back down automatically. You can also wait to recruit Rex until after you've completed Vermeer, in which case the standoff will never happen. But these are super rare edge cases. Just go with the family armor mission or the speech check to keep things clean and simple. Another character you can save on Vermeer is the Salarian Captain Kirihi. After meeting up with his team on the beach, there are a series of optional objectives you need to complete as you proceed to Saren's base. On your way to the base, be sure to do the following actions. Disrupt communications by interacting with this terminal, destroy the satellite uplink, and destroy the Geth flyers. When you reach the base, simply disable the alarms. Don't trigger alarms on the far side of the base. If you do everything right, then Kirihi will survive Vermeer and return in Mass Effect 3. Near the end of the Vermeer mission, you'll have to choose to save either Ashley or Caden. One of these squad mates will always die during the mission regardless of what you do. You cannot save them both, and you can't sacrifice them both either. So just choose the one you like more or hate less. That's pretty much it for Mass Effect 1. If you're playing as a Paragon, I also recommend saving the Rachni Queen and rescuing the Council, as both will help boost your war assets in Mass Effect 3. So let's talk about Mass Effect 2. A lot of characters can die in Mass Effect 2, but funnily enough, it's the only game in the trilogy where you can save absolutely everybody in your squad and ship crew. I have a full guide that details step by step how to save everyone in Mass Effect 2, so I'm just going to give you the Cliff Notes version here. If you're unclear on any of the steps I'm about to give you, then go watch the full guide, which I'll link in the description. The most important factor in keeping everyone alive is completing all of your squad mates loyalty missions. If you gain everyone's loyalty, then it is much easier to keep all your squad mates alive during the final mission. In most cases, simply completing the mission automatically earns their loyalty. There are a few exceptions though. In Tally's mission, you cannot use evidence of her father's crimes in the trial. Otherwise, she'll be really mad at you and you won't get her loyalty. In Zaid's mission, you have to kill Vito Santiago or pass a Paragon speech check at the end if you opt to save the factory workers instead. Thane and Samara's missions are actually failable. In Thane's mission, you have to keep track of Joram to lead during the part when you're on the catwalks. The timer is pretty generous, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem with it. And in Samara's mission, 
If you choose the wrong dialogue options when you're at the bar with Morinth, then she'll get bored and bail on Shepard before you can trap her. It's pretty easy to keep her interested though. Just choose Renegade dialogue options in the bottom left corner, and steer clear of topics like Justicars and family and you should be good to go. As for mission timing, I highly recommend completing all of the loyalty missions before you get the Reaper IFF. You can save Tally's mission for afterwards if you want to, if you want to get that unique dialogue where you bring Legion to Tally's trial, but I recommend completing at least 10 of your squadmates loyalty missions before getting the IFF. The reason for this is because shortly after the Reaper IFF mission, the Collectors will kidnap the Normandy crew, and if you complete more than one mission after the crew has been abducted, then some of them will end up dying before you can rescue them. So basically, here's the order of operations. Do 10 or 11 loyalty missions, do the Reaper IFF mission, do Legion's loyalty mission, the Normandy crew gets abducted, and then launch the final mission. Another important aspect of the final mission is ship upgrades. You'll want to complete the following upgrades before going through the Omega-4 relay. Heavy ship armor, Thanix cannon, and multi-core shielding. During the suicide mission itself, you'll also need to select the right characters for specialty roles throughout the mission. I'll just list these off real quick. Tech Specialist, aka Vent Specialist, Tally, Legion, or Kasumi. Fire Team Leader, Garrus, Miranda, or Jacob. Biotic Bubble Specialist, Jack or Samara. You also want to send someone back with the rescued Normandy crew. I recommend Kasumi, Tally, or Morden. Second Fire Team Leader, Garrus, Miranda, or Jacob. During the final part of the mission, you'll want to leave your stronger squad mates to hold the door while Shepard plus two go to fight the Human Reaper. The strongest characters are Garrus, Zaid, and Grunt. If everyone's loyal, you should have more than enough points among your remaining squad to keep everyone alive during this part. If you follow all of these steps, then everyone should survive Mass Effect 2. But before we move on to 3, I want to mention a couple of important decisions during loyalty missions and other parts of the game. During Morden's loyalty mission, I recommend saving Malin's data, since it will ensure Eve's survival in Mass Effect 3. During Legion's mission, it's better to destroy the Geth heretics, which will make it easier to achieve peace between the Geth and Corians in Mass Effect 3. This one is optional, you can still achieve peace if you rewrite the heretics, but it is a little bit harder. You also want to make sure that Tally gets exonerated during her trial without using the evidence against her father. You can do this by passing a speech check, or by rallying the crowd if you let Vidor leave with Tally on Freedom's progress, and you saved Call Rieger on Haystrom. Oh, and another random decision is that you'll want to have dinner with Kelly Chambers, otherwise she won't appear in Mass Effect 3. To do this, you'll need to choose flirty dialogue options with her throughout the game and speak to her frequently after missions. Eventually, you'll have an option to invite her to your cabin for dinner. If you do this and save her from the collector base, then she will appear on the Citadel in the final game. As for DLC choices, pretty much the only one that matters is Overlord. I recommend sending David Archer to Grissom Academy. Don't leave him with Cerberus. And that's basically it for Mass Effect 2. It's a little complicated, but if you follow all these steps, then you should have no problem saving everyone. So let's talk about Mass Effect 3. A lot of characters can die in this game, and a handful cannot be saved no matter what you do. I'll talk about how to save your favorite characters first, and then we'll talk about war assets and the ending near the end of the video. Off the top of my head, here are all the characters who can potentially die in Mass Effect 3. Miranda, Steve Cortez, Tally, Legion, Grunt, Zaid, Kasumi, though it's unclear if she actually dies, Kelly Chambers, Ashley or Caden, Thane, Morden, Rex, if you sabotage the Genophage Cure, Samara, and Javik, sort of if he views the memory shard. Some other characters can die during the final mission if you have extremely low war assets, but if you're following this guide, you don't need to worry about that. If you're curious and slightly masochistic, then watch my worst Mass Effect playthrough ever video to see what happens if you have extremely low war assets. So let's talk about how to save these characters. I'll tackle this in rough chronological order, though I may skip around a little bit because of side quests. Kasumi, Zaid, and Grunt will all survive if you completed their loyalty missions in Mass Effect 2. So that's an easy one. If you had dinner with Kelly Chambers and saved her from the Collectors in Mass Effect 2, then you'll find her in the dock's holding area early in the game. When you speak to her, be sure to choose the Renegade option and tell her to change her identity. 
otherwise she'll be killed by Cerberus during the coup attempt. If she f survives later on, she'll also admit that she spied on you for the elusive man. During this conversation, choose the Paragon option and forgive her. If you don't forgive her, then she'll commit suicide, which is really dark. Come to think of it, a lot of characters try to kill themselves in Mass Effect 3. I guess everyone is just on the brink. Steve! Cortez is another character who can die in Mass Effect 3. To save him, you just need to complete his loyalty arc. I call it an arc because it's not a mission or anything, just a series of conversations you have with him on the Normandy and the Citadel. You basically need to progress it to at least the point where he places an iPad on the refugee memorial. That way he'll survive the shuttle crash during Priority Earth. Steve! Next up is Morden. He's most likely going to die in your playthrough, unfortunately. He will either die curing the genophage if you're Paragon, or you'll have to shoot him if you want to sabotage the genophage, which I really don't recommend unless you're going full-blown renegade. There is one secret option to save Morden, but it is pretty obscure. Rex needs to die in Mass Effect 1, and you need to destroy Malin's data in Mass Effect 2, which will cause Eve to die during the Chichunka mission. If Rex and Eve are both dead, then you can convince Morden to sabotage the genophage and go work on the Crucible project instead. I love Morden, but it's not really worth sacrificing Rex and sabotaging the genophage to save him. There's barely any content with Morden post Tachanka, except for a handful of emails and a hologram conversation on Earth. You can just watch my YouTube video on what happens if you save Morden if you want to see all that. If you save Malin's data in Mass Effect 2 and cure the genophage in Mass Effect 3, then Rex and Eve will still be alive, giving you maximum Krogan support. Alright, next up is Thane and the Vermeer Survivor. Yeah, Thane is guaranteed to die in Mass Effect 3 if he's still alive. You'll want to talk to him in the hospital early in the game, because he'll save the Salarian Counselor during Priority to Citadel 2. Kirahi is a backup for this role, but it's better if Thane does it because he's dying from Kepril Syndrome anyway. The Vermeer Survivor can possibly die during the Cerberus coup if you cannot convince them to stand down. It's pretty easy to save them, though. There are a bunch of factors that affect how much they trust Shepard, but the easiest ways to win them over are to visit them in the hospital on the Citadel and to lower your weapons at the beginning of the standoff. Doing this will at the very least give you the option to talk them down with a speech check, if not get them to side with you automatically. Miranda is one of the more complicated characters to save in Mass Effect 3, but it's still fairly easy to keep her alive if you know the steps. Basically, you need to do all of the following things. Have all three conversations with her on the Citadel, read Kai Lang's dossier that Anderson gives you after Priority the Citadel 2, it's on your private messages terminal. If you do that, then Shepard warns Miranda about Kai Lang during the Spectre Office hologram conversation. Kai Lang? That slippery bastard's still alive? Then you need to give her access to Alliance resources during the Presidium Apartment conversation. Also, if you romance Miranda in Mass Effect 2, then you can't break up with her during that first conversation in the Citadel docking bay. Otherwise, it's an instant death sentence. If you do all that correctly, she'll survive Kai Lang's attack during the Horizon mission. But you're not entirely out of the woods yet. During the standoff with Henry Lawson, you'll also need to convince him to lower his weapon with a speech check or hit the Renegade interrupt to kneecap Oriana and give Miranda the opportunity to strike. If you don't do that, then Miranda preemptively attacks and Henry Lawson fatally shoots her in the stomach. So let's back up a bit and talk about the geth Corian conflict. Tally and or Legion will die during Priority Rannoch, depending on the decisions you make. Legion will always die during this mission. There is no way to save him, unfortunately. Tally will only die if you side with the Geth, in which case she jumps off a cliff. The best outcome you can get is peace between the Geth and Corians. I have a full guide on how to do this step by step, but the Cliff Notes version is this. Complete Tally's loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2, and get her cleared of all charges without using evidence against her father. Complete Legion's loyalty mission, and ideally destroy the Geth heretics. You could still get peace if you rewrite them, but you'd have to do everything else correctly. Have both Tally and Legion survive the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2. Save Admiral Chorus in Mass Effect 3, complete the Geth Fighter Squadron side mission on Rannoch, and Shepard also needs to have a reputation score of at least 4 bars or higher. If you do all of that, you'll unlock the Paragon and Renegade speech checks to secure peace at the end of the mission. 
Samara can die during the Ardot Yakshi Monastery mission, but all you need to do is to hit the Paragon Interrupt to save her before she tries to blow her brains out. Javik can sort of die in Mass Effect 3, or basically tell you he's going to end his own life after the Reapers are defeated. After Horizon, Shepard will have a conversation with Javik about whether or not he should take a look at the memory shard in his room. Don't do it. Choose the Renegade option here and spare him the pain of revisiting the Prothean Extinction. So that's basically it for saving squad mates. The rest comes down to war assets and your choice of ending. So let's talk about that. I personally don't really enjoy any of the ending choices for Mass Effect 3. They are all ultimately unsatisfying to me. But generally, the way I see it, the two best versions are the destroy ending where Shepard survives, and then synthesis I guess. As far as I know, you need about 8,000 total military strength for Shepard to survive in the destroy ending. This means you'll need to complete all of Mass Effect 3's DLC, as well as pretty much all of the side missions and planet scanning. For the latter, I recommend just looking up a list of war assets on the Mass Effect wiki and going to scan all of the relevant planets that have war assets. Otherwise, it's just too tedious trying to find everything, and you'll waste a lot of time on a minigame which isn't all that fun. Also, one other tip, some of the Citadel side missions require items that you can only get during N7 missions. But if you miss any of those items, you can always buy them from the Spectre Requisitions Terminal on the Citadel, so you don't have to panic if you don't pick up some random collectible while getting fired at by Cerberus troops. As for major decisions in 3, I imagine most of you are going Paragon, so I recommend curing the Genophage, saving the Rachni Queen, only if you saved her in Mass Effect 1, convincing Bollock to join the war effort, you actually get a lot of war assets from the Batarian fleet, and securing peace between the Geth and Quarians. If you do all that stuff I mentioned, you should have at least 8,000 total military strength and be able to get that little cutscene where Shepard breathes. One thing I will note about the destroy ending, however, is that Edie and the Geth will not survive. So if that bothers you too much, then maybe go with Synthesis or Control instead. So there you have it. How to save everyone and get the best ending in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. I also have a bunch more Mass Effect videos, so why don't you check out another one, like this one I've linked on the screen. Shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.